Hello all, welcome to Clark Technologies and we are very happy to announce that we are going to provide a free course for MuleSoft for all the freshers and beginners and who want to learn MuleSoft from scratch. This is entirely free course which we are going to uh, release on day by day basis. So uh, it, it will be a 30 days course. So it is very um, helpful for you to learn MuleSoft from scratch. And we have explained uh, this course with the real time project. We have built a real time project also. In order to explain that, we have created a couple of files and uh, projects, uh, project code as well. So if you want to get those files and uh, fi um, projects please email us with this subject line request to share level 1 course file also we have an important announcement that we are planning to release a MuleSoft advanced level 2 course very soon so in this course we will be discussing most of the topics of uh, MuleSoft uh, which will help you uh, very well in order to complete level 2 certification as well as uh, to work on complex real-time projects as well so I hope uh, you will be uh, enjoying that course as well so if you want to know more details about advanced level course uh, please contact us uh, via mobile or email we will be sharing those details so without further delay let's get started hello all welcome back so i hope you have seen our all previous videos of this playlist and uh, you understood uh, how to design the ramel and how to use this reusable fragments to uh, redesign your ramel uh, in a neat and um, understandable way like this okay now in this video initially we will see how to publish this to exchange and how we can create these fragments as a global fragments because uh, whenever you have this uh, fragment files in local within this ramel it will treat it as a local fragment so in that case you can use in that way this way but uh, in a real time what we we will do what are the common fragments common rights common head to square parameters common responses like error responses and all we will create as a separate fragment and publish it into exchange we can uh, add them as a dependency in our ramel then we can utilize that we will see that stuff first but remember we need to uh, redesign this ramel as per our requirement as per our document okay if you remember uh, we have a uh, lot many fields in our under the structure is also different we have just tried with couple of fields to understand this uh, fragments and all but we need to uh, modify these data types and uh, traits and examples also as per the requirement that we can see later uh, maybe i can edit it and i'll explain you but uh, before that i'll just show you how to publish this to exchange and how we can uh, uh, create a, a global fragments and use them into our ram then we will move further okay so actually we have uh, raised i mean we have created this uh, ram right with all the fragments i'll just open in another tab also okay let it be but now uh, what we can do see see our next step in our api life cycle if you remember we discussed a lot of phases right so first phase is to design the ramel in the design center next we need to publish this to any point exchange and then we can send this ID point exchange access to the customers or users to get the feedback let's see that step first then we will uh, uh, do it in a global okay so to once you are done with the ramel design you have a option called publish here just click on that please bear with my voice for a couple of days i'm having some uh, viral cough and uh, cold so just bear with for one or two days okay so uh, to publish this into exchange you, you will see this option called publishing to exchange and asset version and api version these two options will be available for you and these two are required by default it will have asset version 100 and the api version 1.2 right so let's leave these versions as it is for now let's click uh, publish this to exchange later on if we need to do any changes in this ramel you need to change and you need to republish this again to affect those changes because if you edit something anything in this ramel you need to again publish that to ramel uh, sorry to the uh, exchange remember that initially while you are publishing this ramel to uh, exchange it will give the default versions like this but once if you do any changes you need to again republish this to exchange then your uh, asset version will increase 1.0.1 you need to get the, you need to use that uh, updated version also in your code that we will see one by one but just first remember these versions need to be updated whenever you are doing any change so as of now we'll uh, we 
we are doing it initial commit or initial publish so you can just leave these options as it is and click on publish to exchange see it is saving a new version this will take a moment it is publishing to exchange so within one or two minutes it will publish that to exchange meanwhile let's see one thing let's go to this exchange in the anypoint platform this is the exchange which i am talking about this is the anypoint exchange where all the assets information uh, will come to you okay see here something is the demo dch app which is already there uh, this is not the one which we are going to publish now see now it is published to exchange see earlier there is uh, no uh, raml or api something in the exchange so first what is exchange exchange means it's a collection of assets right so this clart clart means it's our organization while filling that tiny point cloud hub uh, account form i have given clart as an organization name but in your real time projects in your organizations your organization name or client name will be visible here so if any of the developers of that particular organization or that company they published anything raml or uh, applications or any um, custom connectors or something if they publish anything that will be available here under the clart organization so the users or the developers who are having access to this particular anypoint platform account for this particular organization they can utilize those assets that is what we are going to uh, do now so we will we already published this uh, one right so let's just let's refresh it it should show here see now it is showing library management s api rest api okay so rest api we have published here here maybe uh, it is rest api Okay, it should give all the asset information actually. That is fine. We just published it now. IBS Library Management Test API. So that is published here in the exchange. Whenever you see this provided by MuleSoft, which means yeah, it, it means see here lot of assets are there. Many number of assets are there. These assets are available for free of us. Anyone, anyone can uh, utilize these assets uh, because it is provided by MuleSoft directly. So this is available for everyone. But the assets which are uh, visible here in this CLAT or in this particular organization name, this is available for only for the developers who have access to this particular organization or within the team. Okay. So this is how you can publish this. No, now then, what happened? You can just open it. So now you will provide this access to your customer, this exchange access. We are not going to provide uh, RAML access to the customer because if someone uh, modify anything here, it will automatically save, it will affect uh, and it will uh, affect the entire RAML design, right? So we are not going to provide this RAML access to our customers. We will provide this exchange access. Here they cannot modify anything, but still they can test all the endpoints and they can provide the feedback to us. See all the endpoints, all the URLs, all the methods which we have created are available here, right? So we have designed four methods now. Uh, see all the four methods are available here. Let's just scroll it down. Yeah, see you can see endpoints here. Here you can see all the four methods. Once let's click on any method, it is showing here. So what they can do, I mean the customers uh, to check this. Okay, see all the headers information, everything is available here because we have uh, created the usable fragments and all, all the, everything is visible here. So they can test uh, this endpoint here. They can give client ID some secret. As of now, it is dummy values, right? But in real time, you need to give the real values once you do the implementation and all. So they will just test it. So they will check, right? Okay, I'm getting 200, okay, HTTP request one, and this is the response I'm expecting. But to be frank, we need to uh, change this response also as per the requirement. Okay, so what is the requirement? What is the expectation of the uh, response? This is how the response looks like. But just for our uh, practice purpose, we have given this to fields only in the response i will i will modify this later uh, i'll uh, tell you how to do this but just understand how the any customer or end user can uh, provide you the feedback so they can get access for this one for this exchange we, we are actually providing that access to that uh, one 
the customers they can uh, come here they can see what are the endpoints we have uh, developed and they can check this uh, they can test this here with this dummy data they will just uh, analyze the structure if this is the structure they are requiring or not if they are okay they can uh, said oh, okay you can go ahead with the implementation otherwise they will uh, give you feedback like they need some modification see in this case the requirement of uh, their requirement is this one this is the uh, response they are expecting for this particular resource but here that is not there so they will provide feedback right uh, feedback like uh, this is not the re response format we are expecting please uh, change this response format according to the requirement like this so likewise you will get the feedback then you need to rework on this raml again you need to change that uh, sample example uh, with the correct requirement then you need to again publish this to exchange then you will provide that uh, access again they will again test it from there from the exchange and they will uh, confirm like okay this is the raml or this is the design we are expecting like that so then you can start the implementation so that is the second phase of api lifecycle in uh, mulesoft okay so now uh, you know like how to design this raml you know how to uh, publish this to exchange now let's see how we can create global fragments and we can uh, redesign it okay so to do that i'll uh, use this screen again design center let me copy one by one all the fragments let me publish here uh, into the uh, ex into the exchange as a separate fragments all right let me just uh, duplicate this window again to see the uh, assets <coughs> so here I'm going to exchange so as of now we have one rest API called this one now let's do one by one okay so let's first create the rights global rights so I'm just uh, copying this everything from here I'll go to design center I'll create a new fragment this time so to create a new fragment outside to uh, as a uh, global fragment what you have to do you need to go to design center click on create click on new fragment now you can provide name to that fragment you can select the fragment type here earlier we did it in locally right now it will show you all the fragments here as we are going to create the type, just leave that name as uh, type as it is and uh, give the name like query pair of straight now you can give uh, yeah maybe you can use the same name query pair of book straights let's slightly change this so that you can understand how you can include this as a global fragment but uh, in your uh, uh, organization or in your company you will have some naming conventions you need to follow that naming conventions we will discuss that later once we are comfortable with one api end to end then we will see the naming conventions and coding standards also we will discuss in depth okay so now the project name is this one i think you no need to give uh, dot raml here let's see uh, let, i'm clicking on creating fragment so you already copied this query parameters code from here right see it is uh, creating a uh, right now paste that code as it is it will automatically get saved now what you need to do you need to uh, publish this you need to publish this right sorry extra line is coming here okay you need to publish this right so one by one you need to publish all the rights like this so publish to exchange asset version 1.100 as the right is first time it is publishing now click on create, uh, publish to exchange it will once it is published it will show you as a api i mean rest a fragment here let's see that let's wait for yeah publish it to exchange now let's close it let's go to the exchange refresh it yeah see now api spec fragment now we have a uh, published a fragment not the rest api earlier as we have designed the entire uh, uh, raml here all the data types here we are just publishing the entire uh, raml main raml specification main raml means api specification 
So the time it shows REST API. It is a REST API we published earlier. But now we are publishing a fragment. We have published a fragment. Now it is showing API spec fragment. I need to observe this difference. Okay. So just like that, uh, let's uh, create a rights header. Let's copy this. Let's create new fragment. Go to design center again. this I'll create this and I'll show you how to include this okay so now let's click on create uh, select a new fragment provide the name for that fragment it's a common headers maybe you can give common headers okay and the type is right come down click on create fragment Now uh, paste that code here. This is the common headers which we are going to use, right? The client ID, client secret, and correlation ID. So now uh, you need to publish this again individually. Now click on publish. Okay, asset version is there. Okay, now click on publish. It got published right now. Let's close it. Let's see. Let's refresh this. And now again, one more fragment is also published under CLAT organization. So common headers, query params, book straight. Likewise, see if I do all these fragments one by one in front of you, it is wasting of time. So as I create rights now, let's uh, let's publish the example. Uh, yeah, no, for examples, you no need to do anything because it is a JSON file. Now you can directly create, uh, import this JSON file into your browser. So no need of uh, example. And data type, let's do. Let's copy this. Uh, I'll show you how to create a new data type. Just it's a simple same process. I'll show you this one. Then uh, I will pause the video. Then I'll uh, publish all the other fragments this 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 one so, okay i'll publish all these fragments also one by one then i'll resume the video maybe that will save some time okay so click on new one now this time this is a data type now so make sure you selected the data type so the name is uh, 201 uh, response right 201 data type you, you mentioned but i just uh, slightly change it to 201 response Now, just I can do it little quick. Just to follow what I'm doing. So you need to publish this. Likewise, you need to add this all the remaining four also. Uh, we don't have any other thing now. Okay, maybe we can do it quickly. Later on, maybe we can change that. We can uh, change the data type versions and all. We can use that. Okay. Uh, right. Maybe I'll change this and I'll publish the correct one uh, at a time. Let's let's see how we can include this the global fragment first. Then we will think. Okay. Let's uh, use the uh, same uh, same RAML for now. Let's see how we can include this exchange modules. Let me refresh this. Now again, this one more fragment is also there. And though, yeah, uh, if I use the same RAML, then you will easily understand the local and global one. So as this 201 data type, I already published it as a global one now. So I am just removing this from here. You will get one error. No, don't worry. So this file is not available. Because now this 201 data type, I have published it as a global fragment. So, we need to first add that dependency and uh, what are the other things we imported this rights also we imported uh, as a we have created it as a global one right so i'm just completely removing this rights folder here 
okay you will get errors for these three because these three are not available locally now how you can include this from global fragments that is the question so to do that go to dependencies uh, yeah here uh, there is a fragment na uh, yeah what you can do see go to dependencies here just click on plus button after this uh, fragments now you can select what are the fragments you can uh, import see this 201 response i have created it common headers i have created it query parameters book straight i have created it so these three traits i need to add as a dependency as a global fragments so you need to select as many as you want then click on add three dependencies so now what happened all these three fragments which we have published in this exchange they are going to add as a dependency for us see here uh, last time as a local fragments it is having the names here we are importing everything here now we published uh, each and every fragment as a separate uh, fragment into the exchange now we have added as a dependencies under this dependencies section you can see 201 response common headers query params rights now what you need to do uh, you you should do, you should come back to your raml i mean uh, api specification here the this file is not available that is why it is throwing error now just remove this remove this and uh, include because now we have created the file globally we are including that file here so the third step you no need to modify because the name is same the file we are uh, updating now right so now this time it will show you include then it will show you the uh, uh, folder names here data types and examples in this data type we don't have anything so we need to include the write but now the write is uh, where the write is there is no writes folder here so we don't have any writes here locally so from where this writes will come under the exchange modules folder see here one new folder is getting created exchange modules if you expand this it will show you what are the dependencies you have added now this time from where we need to include this file from this exchange modules folder there is no rights folder now we have removed it so we removed it from locally we have created this rights globally from the exchange you need to add that so that is the difference okay see uh, what is the advantage of this so anyone from this clart organization they can add this uh, common headers as a dependency just like we did they can utilize them instead of writing that uh, common headers code uh, again and again in their raml they can just simply add this common headers as a dependency they can utilize that right so let's see uh, this one now we are going to add headers right yeah? so include click on exchange modules here uh, this code will be visible for you all uh, right this is the organization id for you so just click on that otherwise to avoid some confusion i'll i'll show you another easy method so i'm just removing it click on uh, i mean uh, exclamatory include na you can just uh, go to that file so now this is the header file we need to add those this is the common header you need to add right so right click sorry expand it uh, here the common headers is there na here from here you can copy the path you can paste it now this error is gone so now it is adding the file from exchange modules and your organization id and the file and everything stuff it will come from here you can just copy that path instead of selecting from here it will make some difficulty so likewise what you need to do you need to add query parameters right as well so i am removing this because i don't have this right folder and this right file in my local folder so i am removing this i'll just keep include as it is now what you need to add here query parameters rights so it is there in the exchange modules so uh, if do nothing is there you need to check here exchange modules so in the exchange modules we have common headers 201 response query parameter rights so now you need to add this query parameter rights if you follow our previous video this will be very really easy for you so please watch that first then come here if you have any confusions right now okay so you need to just copy the path and paste that path here that's it this error also got now we have one more error which is for 201 response for the post method now we have removed this 201 data type dot raml in our data type folder 
locally right so this is not available that is why it is throwing error just like that you just remove this as we did for other resources then expand the exchange modules come down now you need to add this one right so now expand this click on copy path paste it here now what happened we have couple of local fragments as well as global fragments global fragments means whenever you are uh, adding anything from the exchange as a dependency those are called global fragments so common headers to dot one response query parameters these are applicable for all the methods of all the apis so i have uh, published this as a fragments and i have included those fragments as a dependencies here by using this option now i am including those dependency files here in my raml at the header level from the exchange modules then you no need to change anything here in the header detail and query parameter while 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 using it at method level because we didn't change these names remember that so to refer this we are going to use these names in the methods but we didn't change this name but we change the file names instead of referring it from local folders now we are referring it from global fragments by using this exchange modules i hope this uh, this is uh, actually understandable by you and you get uh, how to include uh, local local fragments and global fragments i think this uh, video is helpful for you right okay if you have any doubts you can uh, comment out or uh, maybe you can uh, uh, you can ask in the telegram or doubt session okay so likewise what i will do i'll save to save some time what i can do i can modify this 404 data types and other data types and other all the responses which we are expecting so i will create these example files in the json files i'll create data types for everything uh, i'll publish them into the exchange in the raml i'll refer from that exchange so i'll do this one in the background i'll pause the video then i'll resume the video once i'm done with that then i'll show you how i Uh, modified everything then we will see the next steps so once we did that we can we need to just publish this to exchange at time then we need to uh, import this raml we can start the implementation because once we cleared once we uh, modified all the responses and all the data types as per the requirement then you will your client will obviously provide a okay for you as a feedback then maybe you can uh, start the implementation okay so let's me let me pass the video here i uh, will do all these changes i'll come back then maybe we can uh, see you can discuss and uh, uh, the overview what changes i have done uh, then we can continue from there actually i'll uh, uh, tell you one funny example or a stupid example for this uh, to make you understand little better so local fragments you can treat it as like the curry is prepared at your home global fragments you can treat it as the curry is prepared at curry point right so uh, if your mom or your wife or anyone who cooked the curries or who prepared the curries at your home who can access or who can have that food only the family members of your family right at your family right if you have like for example if you have four members in your home those four members can have the access to that curry they can uh, maybe if they can uh, serve by their their selves they can go to that kitchen and they can take uh, curries from there they can serve and they can eat those curries they can have those curries right but uh, anyone from outside uh, like your neighbors or any other unknown persons can come into your kitchen and uh, have that curries no right just like that those are called local fragments <laughs> okay so these are all the curries prepared at your home so only this is you can treat the specification as your family so your family members can access to the uh, curries prepared at your home only your family members not the outsiders but if you can go to curry point so these fragments are you can treat the curries prepared at curry point <laughs> outside the curry point okay it's it it, it makes a funny example uh, it doesn't make sense but uh, it is easy for you to understand the differences right so you can treat these uh, uh, fragments as the curry is prepared at curry point so anyone in your city or nearby your city you can um, just uh, uh, 
uh, have this maybe outside of your city also can access <laughs> that's not the issue here but uh, all your neighbors or all the um, i mean all the other outsiders who have uh, staying nearby they can come to this curry point they can uh, um, they can order this curry and take to home and eat right they they don't want to i mean they are not going to create this curry from scratch they are not going to prepare the curry from scratch by cutting the vegetables by preparing all the recipes and all right they will just simply go to the curry point they can order the curry they want they can uh, come to home they can uh, have that curry they can eat that curry instead of preparing that curry again they can reuse that curry prepared at curry point so the reusability is even in this uh, local uh, fragments also all your family members are not going to kitchen and cook every curry from scratch right only one person uh, any your mother or your wife or whoever it may be any one person who will cook that curry all the family members can eat that curry they can utilize that curry they can have that curry right you can think in any way like that is called reusability because all the if you have five family members all the five ma family members will not go and prepare the same curry from scratch they will just use that curry one people will one person will prepare that so that is called reusability but coming to this local and global you can understand in this way at your home if some curries are prepared only that is accessible to your family members if you go to curry point the curries are available for anyone like that okay okay let's come to our topic again i'll i'll redesign this and i'll uh, publish this i'll get back to you okay yeah so uh, i have redesigned it um, i have added the required fragments and all i'll just walk you through um yeah so i have created this create new book input this is one fragment kind of data type fragment uh you know right uh, create book input i have named it as it is an all or uh, global fragments now okay i have created a fragment separately by using design center and publish it individually so this is an individual fragment so it is a data type and uh, the difference between the fragments and specification maybe you cannot test this fragment individually just like we did for uh, uh, for the specification we we can test it by using get method post method by using this mocking service right so this point also you can just uh, uh, remember we cannot test fragments uh, directly because these are just a uh, type of uh, examples or something you cannot test raml fragments individually you can test a specification from design center as well as from exchange by using mocking service okay so this is a create book new input uh, data type i have created this is for all the input fields required for this post method which we are going to create a new book so that is one thing <coughs> and a common error response i have created all fragments or data type fragments only i have created because we don't have much uh, headers or query parameters as of now we have already created the headers and query parameters uh, stuff right so all the data types i have created this is common error response so for all the errors 401 400 any errors you can follow the same response error code description error type and correlation id so i have created a separate fragment for this and uh, another data type is get library by id this is our second resource uh, if you remember the library id is the uri parameter Uh, when we send that library id as a uri parameter it will uh, get only that particular library information from the database okay for that i have created object sorry data type okay so here to create data type first thing you need to uh, define type is object if you because your uh, example uh, will be an object inside that if you have want to uh, uh, specify any json inside json you can specify type as array because here books is an array inside that we have multiple books information in that particular library uh, right so that is why i have mentioned let me show you the example <coughs> i'll just open this
so here if you can see libraries library URA parameter you will find this uh, books is an array inside the books we have multiple books information so that's this way I defined it as array and inside that all the books parameters properties we can define likewise I have created multiple fragments and I have included these fragments into our uh, system API specification by following the same syntax which we have discussed earlier so I will publish this into exchange I will publish the specification and all the fragments into exchange and I will share this code to you all as well by using Azure DevOps coding repository uh, how you to access that code and how to create that repository I will explain you in our next video but I will share the entire code of this RAML before that you can just try by yourself follow this video try uh, by your own uh, so that it will be uh, build confidence in you if you try it by your own instead of following or referring something in this video we have everything covered right so you can just follow this and try for uh, uh, the small fragments maybe this uh, external fragments which I have created I will I will share it with you the entire code then you can maybe refer and you can include them into your um, code but first try by yours, your own okay so then if you remember this header detail we have already then um, the new fragments also I have added as a dependencies here I have referred it here and I followed I referred it in the method at the level so I already published it into exchange so I'll share this code for your reference um, so in our next video we will see the other topic I hope this video is also helpful for you if you have any doubts please uh, um, let us know or let's schedule a doubt session to clarify this okay thank you